confused by crypto, bamboozled by the blockchain, nonplussed by non-fungible tokens, you're not alone. The Economist's finance experts Mathieu Favat and Alice Fullwood talk to executive editor Helen Joyce about the fundamentals of cryptocurrencies and the technologies that make them possible. Depending on who you listen to, it can be described as a haven for scammers, the future of finance, a slow motion ecological disaster, or all three at once. Perhaps we could start by defining some of our terms. Well, crypto originally, as, as you said, Ellen, refers to cryptography, which is the, the study of secure communications. Uh, and that's a set of technologies allowing for sending a message uh, that only the sender and the recipients can read. Uh, and in the case of cryptocurrencies, that, that's uh, money. But crypto today is also uh, used to describe the entire universe of crypto assets. Uh, and these are assets, as we dis we'll discuss later, we'll explain how they, they work, uh, that uh, do not rely on third parties like central banks or banks to authenticate their value or authenticate uh, the, their movements. Brilliant. I think that you've got very hard one now, um, Alice. Every time someone's tried to explain the blockchain to me, I understand it while they're speaking and then I forget it all as soon as they've stopped. Sure. So a blockchain is just a database, uh, but it's a special kind of database. So rather than being stored on sort of a single computer by a single institution like a bank, say um, it is a database that is distributed across uh, lots of computers uh, called nodes, and they each have a copy of this database and they update it uh, in blocks. So a new block of transactions is added to the chain that is stored. That's where the blockchain comes from. And as Mathieu was talking about, the blockchain is sort of a key part of crypto. It was invented with the invention of uh, Bitcoin and it helps uh, add new transactions without appealing to a single centralized entity. Uh, everyone in the uh, computer network has to agree for a new block to be added. All right, I understood that much. Um, mining, Mathieu, this is you. So mining is, a, is another uh, tricky one, uh, which is related to, to what Alice just explained. So. To add uh, new blocks to, to the chain, uh, you, you need to validate a certain number of transactions. And this is done by a, a, a number of uh, users on, on the network. Uh, and what they do is they pick a number of transactions that uh, happen in, in real time, and they, they, they decide which one they want to, to validate. Uh, they validate them, they verify you know, who's sending the money, is it going to the right person, uh, is, is, are enough funds available uh, at the sender's uh, account? Uh, all things like that. Um, and once they've done that, uh, because they all do it at the same time, only one person can actually order, add a block, they, they need to compete in a, in a pretty complex mathematical problem uh, uh, whose winner will decide who has the right to add a block to the blockchain. Um, and they, do, they don't do this for free, um, even though uh, presumably it's, it's, it's fun to do. Um, they do it because in exchange, if they win the right to, to add this block, then they, they receive some, uh, some Bitcoin, if they're mining Bitcoin, or some other currencies, if it's another one. And speaking of currencies, what about you, Alice, Bitcoin? Yes, so Bitcoin is the first uh, cryptocurrency or crypto asset that was invented. Uh, it, it was first issued in January of 2009, and its creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, um, he came up with this sort of idea of a blockchain and the first blockchain was designed to record transactions in Bitcoin. So it is the token that the miners receive for adding blocks to the blockchain and it is the sort of native asset of that chain. And, you know, it was initially worth sort of very little, basically zero. Um, and today is by far the biggest uh, cryptocurrency by market cap and is sort of the most famous of all of them. And Ethereum, we're hearing a lot more about Mathieu. So Ethereum is uh, is the new kid on the block. I mean, it's not so new anymore, but it, it definitely was when, when it came out. It's uh, it's younger than Bitcoin. Uh, it's in many ways nimbler than it because it uses or it is it's it's, it's yes, it's created uh, transactions um, uh, that are done in Ethereum are recorded on a different type of blockchain, uh, which bears the same name. Um, and which is uh, just more nimble, more modern, uh, allows users of that uh, currency to do many more things, many more complex uh, uh, financial transactions, which we'll discuss when we we'll speak about DeFi. So it's, it's, um, it's uh, the, the challenger, but it's a big challenger. Okay, an NFT, you said. Alice, what's an NFT? Yes, uh, NFT stands for non-fungible token, um, and the non-fungible sort of part of that term is supposed to distinguish these kinds of tokens from 
the likes of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So they are fungible, uh, as is the US dollar. If you swap one Bitcoin for another or one Ethereum for another or a dollar for another, you have the same value. Uh, Non-fungible tokens are uh, instead attached to unique assets. So that's either a piece of media, like a picture or a video uh, or a piece of music even. And it's essentially a cryptocurrency token that is issued with reference to that media. And it means that you own some, uh, some, I guess, almost the idea of that media. Uh, so if someone who owns an artwork issues uh, an NFT in it, and they sell that to you, you You might not own the artwork, but you own the NFT that represents it. So maybe I could ask you both to tell me, um, when you're writing about cryptocurrencies, how do you keep your, your, your head straight? It's so confusing. Is there a trick for thinking about it? It's a challenge to write about crypto because there's also a lot of, uh, of jargon that's being used to describe things that you could probably describe in, in a slightly simpler way. You know, in uh, for example, people who were Hold on to their uh, crypto are called the hodlers, uh, and that um, dates back to a time when uh, a pretty frustrated investor in crypto who had sold it to crypto too quickly um, vented his anger on, uh, on on Twitter um, after perhaps drinking a bit too much wine, and he misspelled. He said, "Oh, you guys are the ho the, the hodlers," uh, uh, you know, saying basically I should have done like you did, and he created a, a concept that's extremely popular these days. So I guess one. One one way to to keep track is to uh, get uh, you know behind the jargon to try and understand exactly what people mean, but also to have fun with these these new concepts, which you know are quite colourful. Anything you'd like to add to that, uh, Alice? So you'll pick up a crypto story, you know, once um, once every sort of few months, maybe a bit a big one, and I find that if I haven't been been reading about it that much. Um, I get very frustrated immediately with all of the sort of nonsense um, terms and everything that everyone is talking about. And I'm just like, oh, God, this is all rubbish. Like, why are we even bother bothering? And then once I sort of read more and more and more and I do all of my reporting, I'm like, I become sort of more on the evangelical side where I'm like, no, no, this is it. This is everything. It is this sort of beautiful dream. Um, and I just I guess I don't know how, how realistic it is, but um, it, it, it can it can draw you in if you if you read about it enough. I'm Sasha Nyato, Executive Editor at The Economist. This was part of a digital event produced exclusively for subscribers to The Economist. If you'd like to watch the full recording of this or any of our other events, please click the link. You'll have to register first, or you could subscribe to The Economist and enjoy all of our journalism. Thanks for watching.